gather like mourners over the ancestral home of Randolph Steer, patriarch of the Steer family of Philadelphia. Randolph was an ingenious inventor, founder of Steer Industries. And as the mighty fall, so fell Randolph, right down the staircase within these very walls, but he really left the world five years ago when he lost his wife Irene and spent the rest of his life trying to find her again. Strange stories have grown up around this foreboding place since old Randolph secluded himself here. Tales of seances and witchcraft and the dead walking the grounds. And no one can say what will happen now that Randolph himself is buried in Steer Manor. I'd like to thank you all for being here today, although I'm sorry it takes such a sad occasion to bring us together. I can't think of any other reason. Yes. Well, uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm Willis Lyman, executor of Mr. Steer's estate. I'd also like you to meet Mr. Dash Balder, who represents Mr. Steer's brother, Justice. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Well, not happy. I mean that I'm glad to... That is to say, I'm very pleased that... Uh, Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Balder. It was good of you to come. And this is Madam's mayor, Mr. Steers. I was Randy's spiritual guide and transmedium. Uh, of course. Uh, thank you for being her. Here, now. <laughs> then I, I have here the last will and testament of Randolph Steer. So, let us begin. Maybe we should all have a drink first. I think that would be more appropriate afterwards, Leonard, if I may continue. <coughs> I, Randolph Steer, being of sound mind <laughs> and, and memory, make this my last will and testament, revoking all other wills and codicils heretofore made. Hors d'oeuvres. Grimsby, I don't really think this is the time. Oh, oh, oh just put it down on the table. Uh, with your permission, I will skip over the standard clauses and business directives and get right on to the special bequests. By all means, let's not drag this thing out. I do have a dinner engagement. Very well. Article 4. As I cannot leave my possessions in the gracious keepings of my beloved Irene, who has no further use for worldly goods, I must divide them among the living, who may still find some value in them. Um, Grimsby, what are these? They're quite delicious. To my sister, Prudence Milverton, I leave all furnishings, decorations, and fixtures of Steer Manor. Oh, my lord. Well, I suppose we could have another of those charity auctions or something. To my nephew, Prudence's son, Charles Milverton, I leave my three automobiles. Charles, darling, mm, do try one of those uh, pink ones. Tell me, Lyman, <clears throat> what is the value of scrap metal these days? To my brother, Justice Steer, I leave my library of first editions and other rare books and papers. Hmm. I didn't think Justice could read. Well, you know, these are rather tasty. Uh, perhaps we should have something to wash them down with? To my stepson, Calvin Adler, I leave 4% of my shares in Steer Industries. What is this? Chopped chicken liver? Well, the cheese ones are pretty good, too. Put that down. You'll ruin your supper. To my cousin, Leonard Vole, I leave the contents of my wine cellar. <laughs> Wonderful! Grimsby, champagne for everyone. Could we, please? 
Uh, to my grandnephew, Nick Steer, I leave 2% of my shares in Steer Industries. Oh, fine. Some rusty heaps for me and 2% of the business for a skirt-chasing college boy. Hey, I'll give you 2% of something, buddy. Uh, can we try to show a little decorum here? <clears throat> uh, to Dulcie Lamb, who was so helpful and so kind to an old crackpot, I leave $10,000. <laughs> now there, my dear child. Have a cracker. To Edward Grimsby, my loyal servant, I leave a lifetime pension. Grimsby, you simply must come to work for me. Or at least um, give my cook your recipes. To my good friend, Professor Oliver Lindenbrook, I leave my journals and other papers documenting my research. Uh, perhaps I can be more persuasive in death than I was in life about these matters. To Madame Zmeyer, who brought me hope when all hope had been abandoned, I leave my eternal gratitude and $25,000 that she may continue to develop those great gifts that nature has bestowed upon her. You really must have lifted his spirits, my dear. All the rest and remainder of my estate shall be placed in trust under the administration of my executor to be used for the benefit and furtherance of the Ernest Shabanak Foundation. What? Who or what on earth is a shabby shack? Signed by Randolph Steer on the 7th day of October in the year of our Lord, 1935, and witnessed by myself. Well, I'd say this calls for a drink. You think your eyes opening in the morning calls for a drink? All right, all right. Let's calm down, please. Calm down. Calm down there. That's right. Thank you, Grimsby. Now, then everything's fine, so that's just... I'm uh, afraid everything is not fine, Mr. Lyman. Why, what do you mean, Professor? I have reason to believe that the will read here today is not the final wish of Randolph Steer. Not the wish? I assure you, sir, this document was made, signed, and witnessed under my full supervision, and that all is quite correct. I don't doubt the authenticity of the document, Mr. Lyman. I mean to say that I believe it has been superseded. By what? By a new will. New will? Oh, that's impossible. I have a will myself. With your permission, I would like to read a message from Randolph received by me just one day after he died. Professor, if this note is meant to constitute a holographic will written by Mr. Steer, no, I... No, sir, you misunderstand me. If I may, dear Oliver, you must come to the house right away. I am through. I must have your help. Now that the door is open, it must be guarded, and you are the only one I can trust. I have put it all in a new will. I shall explain everything when I see you. Hurry, Randolph. But I arrived too late. What did he mean, through with what? Yes, Professor, the note is not very clear. An open door, guarded. I can't make much out of all that. The meaning of the note is not immediately relevant, Mr. Lyman. What matters is that Randolph is quite clear about the existence of a new will. Perhaps, but why was I not notified about it? This is a legal matter, after that all. That must be obvious. Randolph met with his accident shortly after writing this note. The tone of immediacy in the message indicates that whatever led him to this action must have developed very recently. Randolph's excitement may even have contributed to his death. Then the new will must still be in the house somewhere. Look, it's getting very late. If I such really a will does exist, it is my duty to my client to find it and carry out his true wishes. Well, let's go. I mean, hey, we don't have anything else to do. I've wasted enough of my time here. Why don't we think about this thing calmly? Over a nice glass of wine, perhaps? Will you please excuse me? I'd like to go up and wash my face. Uh, uh, a new <laughs> Boy, that was something. Do you think she'll be all right, Prof? Dulcie is a young, healthy girl. Of course she'll be all right. Don't call me Prof. Oh, sorry, Professor. But what do you think made her scream like that? I don't know. She did say something about Randolph's accident. 
Since she was upset by the request, perhaps when she approached the stairs, she thought about what had happened there and... She said that she saw him falling, Professor. I doubt that. She was just upset, that's all. Oh, that was really kind of strange, too. Why would she be upset about getting $10,000? She should have been more like Lenny in his wine cellar windfall. It's all rather silly, actually. $10,000 meant no more to Randolph than all that liquor he never drank. Well, the bequests were a little odd. Randolph must have changed a great deal since I saw him last. And I'm still worried about Dulcie. Oh, yes, that's right. You two were in one of my classes together. I seem to recall you spent more time looking at her than listening to my lectures. That was a long time ago, my first year. But she left after the fourth semester. I didn't see much of her after that. Well, perhaps you saw enough of her before that. Not nearly. Never mind. Listen, she said something else, remember? Not just seeing Randolph falling, but something about a figure, a person at the top of the stairs. An hallucination brought about by the fainting spell. How do you know that? Maybe she really saw something. Maybe it meant something. Relax, Mr. Steer. We have more important matters to attend to just now. I believe the explanation of Randolph's note is here, in his journals. Therefore, I will begin by studying them while you make a thorough search of the house. How can I search the whole house by myself? I recommend taking one floor at a time. In any case, I'm sure you will not be the only interested party, so you will have help with your search. Though I can't be sure how truly helpful it will be. What is that supposed to mean? Mr. Steer, I wonder if you would allow me to concentrate. There are many books and very little time. Yeah, sure. Sorry. I didn't mean to disturb your reading. Come back later, and I'll let you know if I've learned anything that might prove helpful. Great. I'll just go search the whole house. No problem. No, oh, no, don't get up. I'll show myself out. See you later. It must be here. It must somewhere. Hey! Who is that? Grimsby? It is I. Well, why are you dressed like that? I borrowed these robes from a less than willing monk near the gate. What are you talking about? What's going on here? It was the only way I could gain inference by the guards. Guards? What guards? Lenny, is that you? I had to see her. My blood was burning for her. Who? What is this? The Lady Catherine. I could not endure another moment. The rose in her cheek, the silken hair, all the color of fire. Wait a minute. I dare not. The Duke, that sloth from hell, he searches even now. You know how he keeps a prisoner here, his own lady, locked away in that lush crimson dungeon of a room. A place better suited to his own animal lust for blood and battle. Yeah, I think I'll be going now. Wait, I found it. It is here. Praise be you spoke the truth. The passage is here. I... What in the world? shall not forget you, friend. The Duke will not have his satisfaction tonight. You have truly saved my skin. We have to be the ones. Don't you understand? Understand what? Why do I bother? Callie, listen to me. We have no idea what that fruitcake was up to. Things could turn out even worse than they are now, though it's hard to imagine that. Whatever the case, if we don't find it first, we'll have no control. We'll have to take it and like it. Cherokee spirit feathers. Don't you take that tone with me, moth brain. What? Oh, no. Here in the case, some crazy Indian feathers steer dug up somewhere. Fine. Just wonderful. Our whole lives hanging by a thread, and you're more interested in that idiot's chicken feathers. Cherokee feathers. Moron! Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I, I if don't... it wasn't for me, do you know where you would be now? In that case, stuffed and mounted right next to the Cherokee chicken feathers. I know, dear. I rely on you. You know that. But we're all right. We don't need that steer's money. Callie? Callie sugar lumps. Don't you see? I'm only looking out for your best interest. I know, Pimento, but there's nothing to be done anyway. 
pudding-brained pinhead. The very least we can do is try to hold on to what little we've got. Now, we are going to find that will before anyone else, especially that snot-nosed college kid. And if we don't like what's in it, we destroy it. Do you understand now? Look. What? The Stones of Odin. Callie, go tell Grimsby to bring me a martini. A double. Uh, Professor, I... Listen to this, Nick. Randolph wrote this entry in his journal about four years ago. A woman named the mayor came to the house to introduce herself to me. She told me she had heard of my interest in ancient cultures and my expeditions to strange lands. She asked to see my collection of artifacts. I asked how she had heard of these things, but she was mysterious on this point. I soon learned that this was her way. She said only that she too traveled and also had a passion for things long dead. I allowed her to peruse my trophy room. I told her that my pursuit of such subjects had waned since the death of Irene. Then she said something that echoed strangely in my mind. She said, A road may come to an end, but the land beyond continues forever. Life is a road. So that's how he met her? Yes. Continue the search, Nick, and keep your ears open. I'll go on studying this. What do you think of Grandfather's loot, Mr. Balder? Oh, oh, hello there, Mr. Uh... Nick. Yes, of course, Mr. Nick. Steer. No, Balder, actually. Dash Balder, at your service. No, I'm Steer. Nick Steer. You work for my grandfather, Justice Steer. And just how did you know that, Mr. Steer? I'm psychic. Call me Nick, will you? So what do you think? Uh, about the library, I mean. Uh, yes, impressive. Most impressive, Mr. Justice. Steer. Mr. Steer will be very appreciative, I'm sure. Yeah? Well, as far as I know, the only book my grandfather ever read was The Pharmacist's Companion. Really? Wasn't that the one where Sherlock Holmes... Not exactly. I remember Grandfather saying once that the two dirtiest things in the world were money and books, because he said so many hands oozed their germs onto them over and over again, and the germs went on living in the paper, just laying there in wait for some poor victim who couldn't stand up to them. Yeah, I, I see. Well, you must admit it does sound logical. Well, then... I'd be careful, Mr. Balder. That book you were holding is almost 200 years old. Oh? That is interesting. Yes. Just think of how many filthy fingers must have rubbed those pages. How many millions of germs must be crawling around in there? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Steer. I have to go and... Well, I shouldn't speak to Mr. Lyman. We'll talk again, I'm sure. Yes, well... Bye-bye. Oh, uh, sorry. Hey, who said that? I was here first. I'm playing with it. Where are you? Are you hiding? I don't want to play that now. Go away. I'm playing this by myself. Oh, how? Who? Who are you? Go away. I'll tell my father. Well, who is your father? If he comes up here, you'll find out. Uh, well, what's your name? Dicky. Dicky, Dicky, Dicky. Now leave me alone or I'll call my father. You're not supposed to be here. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe we could play together or something? You play this alone, stupid. No, you don't. Yes, you do. Everybody knows that. You must be really dumb. Look, kid, uh, Dicky, I just wanted to ask you something. You don't ask me. You ask the Ouija. Don't you know anything? Okay, smarty pants. Then let me ask the Ouija something. No. Come on, you little brat. It's mine. It's mine. I'm going to tell my father I knew he's going to get you. Take it easy. What a creepy kid. You call me creepy. You're stupid. You're the stupidest stupid person in the world. My father's going to tear your ears off. Stupid, stupid, stupid. All right, all right. Calm down. I'm sorry. He's going to bite off your kneecaps and play bing bong with your eyeballs. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, 
Madame... Zameya. Zameya. Sorry. You know my great-uncle pretty well, didn't you? I have seen his soul. I hope he was fully clothed at the time. Did you want something, Steer? Yeah. I wanted to talk to Madame Zameya, if that's all right with you. Please, gentlemen. Spirit of this house is angry enough. The house is angry, huh? What do you mean? The house, the heart of the house is heavy. It, it wants to be left alone. It's just a house. A house is like a man. To look at a man, you may say he is just a man. But uh, he is much more. He is every sound he has heard, every sight he has ever seen. He is every joy and sorrow and fear he has felt. And he is also every other man he has ever known and every woman he has ever loved. A man is not just a man, and this house is not just a house. But a boob is a boob is a boob. Well, Charles, at least we know you can count. You see, the house makes you angry. It wants you to leave. It wants to be left alone. turn of events. It will make no difference. I admire your confidence. You admire more than that, darling. <laughs> so you really can read minds. Hmm? Your eyes tell me all I need to know. Around you, my eyes seem to have a mind of their own. Just as long as they do not have hands as well. All right, let's forget the anatomy lesson for a moment. What are we going to do about this professor? At the moment, nothing. He will never find the secret of this place. No one will. Not even you? I already know all the secrets I am interested in. Ah, Nick, good. I found this entry later in the same journal. Listen. Zamea and I have been exploring the possibilities of life beyond death for about two months now. She intrigues me with some fascinating ideas, but they do not go much farther than the traditional spiritual or psychic methods. We have tried readings, seances, and Ouija boards, as well as assorted other incantations and spell castings. I am beginning to feel that while there is occasional indications of a presence during these sessions, that we may have exhausted the power of these ancient tricks. I do think, however, that there may be a way to actually make contact but a whole new approach is required. Do you think you really believe that, Professor? I don't know, Nick. I don't know. Citizen Barrett, you stand accused of witchcraft by the good neighbors of this community. How say you? How say me? I say me wants out of here, and get your sister off me. Bailiff, teach this connival with devil some respect for the court. Court? This is a bedroom, you cottonhead! I'm Lord. That's better. Secretary Khan, read the charges. Maid Guthrie did see Robert Barrett place three live gerbils under his coat and caper like a man possessed. Mary Windsor, daughter of Arthur, saw the man Barrett speak to a pig in a manner most familiar. Smithy Knox once beheld the same Robert Barrett remove all his clothes before bathing. Young Gretsch, the town idiot, 
swears he heard Robert Barrett singing through his nose while baking his own cracker. All right, enough! This is nuts! You people are all dead! You see, citizens, how the evil one compels him to threaten us? No, no, no! Don't you realize? Can't you tell? Just feel yourselves. Be still. Do not try to tempt this court with your Gnostic indulgences. Okay, forget it. All right, you got me. I confess, I did take a bath with my clothes off. Excellent. Young man, you have made a wise decision. Because you are repentant of these crimes, this court is moved to be merciful. You will be burned at the stake. Bailiff? Burned at the stake? Your soul will be purified by fire. What is it with you people? This guy sits up there with a wig and a black dress, and you're taking me away? Bailiff, remove the prisoner. You're not only dead, you're completely bananas! Hold your tongue before you make it worse for yourself. You see, Mr. Ball. What I'm trying to make clear to you is that until the existence of a new will is either confirmed or dismissed, no one can claim any part of the estate. Not even the books? Uh, I'm afraid not. I, I don't like leaving a job unfinished, Mr. Lyman, especially when it's my job. Of course. Mr. Balder, there may be something you can do. If there is a new will somewhere in this house, it would serve both our interests to find it before anyone else. Yes, I, I see that. Why? Because if someone else found it, they could tamper with it in some way. Why would they want to? Well, if that person didn't come out as well in the new will as they did in the old... Of course! They would contest it on the ground. No, 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 Boulder. They would most probably destroy it. Well, yes, that would be another alternative. Yes. I suggest we make every effort to find it ourselves. And I suggest that we remain very discreet about it. Discreet, yes. Discreet? Uh... Don't make a show of looking. And if you find something, bring it to me without telling the others. Is that clear? Oh, uh, absolutely. Uh, clear as mud. Yes, sir. Positively opaque. Yes. Well, Professor, there are some interesting things going on around here. Here, too, Nick. I started the second journal. It begins with this. I have said farewell to Zemea. I am grateful to her for bringing me something to believe in again. But now I must go forward on my own. I am formulating some new theories involving energy fluctuations. I am convinced that nature works by the same principles everywhere. Therefore, whatever methods I can develop here should have the same results on other planes of existence as well. Do you think that's true? Go on, Nick. Back to the search. There's something very peculiar going on around here. And I say we should all leave. Ah, oh, there you are, dear. Well, it's about time. Get me another one. But, dear, I... ring I... for Grimsby. Oh, do calm down, Olive. Yes, dear. Remember your... Shut up, Pinhead, and get me that drink. But Mr. Lyman said... I think said... Mrs. Milverton is quite right. We must keep our heads. In Prudence's case, I don't see how that's any great advantage. Well, I never... I believe it. All right, all right. Now, uh, Mrs. Adler, what happened exactly? Sugar lumps. Did something bad happen to you? You mean other than my marriage? Oh, the silly thing is a bit on edge simply because there was a draft in the conservatory. A draft? That was no draft, you old windbag. The musical instruments seem to start playing with themselves. I beg your pardon? Well, I, 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 I'm sure that can be explained somehow. All of it's overreacting, that's all. Your legs were working pretty good, honey. Look like that thing around your neck heard the hounds coming. Oh, I'll investigate for myself. Please, excuse me. You know, it's just possible that old Randolph wasn't so batty after all. Well, of course he was. Who else would live in a haunted house? Where's that stiff Grimsby? You rang. Oh, Grimsby, do be a dear and fetch me a glass of sherry. Bring me a large whiskey immediately. But I wonder if I could get a glass of warm milk, perhaps, Grimsby? Yes, sir. Uh... Milk? Calvin, if you were a man, I'd knock you down.
Grimsby? Yes, Master Nick. Will you stop? Never mind. Grimsby, is it possible that Great Uncle Randolph might have hidden something important in here? Something like what? Like a will, Grimsby? What do you think everybody's been talking about all evening? This is a wine cellar, Master Nick. Really? I must replenish the bar before dinner. Go ahead, I'll just take a look around. Maybe under a bottle. Bring it in the sheaves. We will come rejoicing. Bring it in the sheaves. <laughs> Greetings, friends. Greetings. A fine, fine day, is it not, children? A beautiful day. Grimsby, look out. Lester Delworthy, friends. Reverend Lester Delworthy. And who might you be, son? Me? Grimsby, this man is not for real. Can I help you, sir? Grimsby, listen to me. He's a, a, a phantom, a specter. He's not one of us. We're all children of the light, sir. But you're a little young to understand that yet. But you, sir, I'll venture that you have glimpsed the light. Am I right? Light, sir? Yes, that great, warm, welcoming light that awaits us all. Unless I miss my guess, I'd say that you're ready to come along with me. Watch out, Grimsby. He's trying something. I have my duties here, sir. I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me. You don't have to be nice to dead people, Grimsby. Come along now. There's peace and contentment just down the road. Oh yes, it's a beautiful place for the sun shines all the time, and the birds sing. Then why don't you get back to it and leave us alone? The boy don't understand, does he? But you, sir. I have dinner to prepare, sir. Perhaps you would care to join the others? He doesn't eat, Grimsby. He doesn't even breathe. No, thank you. I'll be moving on now. We'll be meeting another time, I hope. I believe, once you think about it, you'll come to see that you belong with our little group. Yeah, and you belong in a pine box! Thank you, sir, but I am needed here. Good evening. Good day, sir. Good day, son. Bring it in the sheaves. Bring it in the sheaves. Grimsby, what are you? A, a Democrat or something? That was a ghost for Pete's sake! Live and let live. That's my motto, Master Nick. more where that came from. Thank God for that. Oh, yes. Thank you, dear. Well, I've examined the instruments in the conservatory, and I can't find any sign of anything unusual. I'm afraid I can't explain what you say happened in there. What we say happened? Just what are you implying? Well, I'm sure he didn't mean anything, dear. Oh, well, that makes it all right, then. As long as you don't think so. I simply meant that there is no evidence of anything strange in there now. I'm sure there is a logical explanation. Don't bet on it. Come off it, steer. He's right. Hearing music is the least of what's going on in this place. I'm telling you right now, this house is alive with dead people. What? I wouldn't put it past my brother... Putting that subject aside for the moment, we have yet to resolve the question of what to do about the will. I, for one, would like to know who believes the professor's story. It's not his story. What about Randolph's note? Anybody could have written that. Including Randolph. I still don't see what's so important about it. We're no worse off than we were before any of this happened. You're certainly not. But as for Kelly and I, we're struggling to make ends meet. Well, that's right. We're living beyond our means, and we can't afford it. Well, I have no interest in anybody's money. But I do know something about what Randolph was trying to do from typing his notes, and... I believe he may have succeeded. The only thing he succeeded at doing was driving himself insane. Oh, yes, you'd like that to be true, wouldn't you? Don't get all worked up, dollface. I'm telling you for the last time, Charles. Will you two stop bickering? This is getting us nowhere. Now, Miss Lamb, what in fact do you think Mr. Steer was up to? I think he was trying to make contact with... with his dead wife, Irene. I resent you bringing my mother, God rest her soul, into this. If she had never married that madman, she might still be alive today. Oh, he loved her, Mr. Adler. She was all that concerned him. That's why he took this course in the first place. My dear, it would not be the first time that grief unbalanced someone. Well, I don't know whether it did or not. 
All I know for sure is that it killed him. I don't know by who or by what, but I tell you, Randolph Steer was murdered. Grimsby, I need a decanter for this. Yes, sir. Hey, Grimsby, why don't you come clean? I cleaned this morning, sir. Come on. Have you made a mess, sir? You may fool everybody else in this mausoleum with a Bella Lugosi bit, but not me. Your decanter, sir. You know everything there is to know about this house and about what went on here. Now, Randolph left you pretty slim with that lousy pension. I can make your life a lot cozier if you cooperate with me. If there is anything I can do for you, sir. Yeah, that's the attitude I'm talking about. So, we both know what happened to Randolph, don't we? Yes, sir. And you know about the new will, too, right? Yes, sir. Okay, let me in on it, and I'll make sure your end is sweetened considerably. I don't believe my end needs sweetening, sir. You're just the butler. You can't pull this off alone. I can. I'm family, understand? Yes, sir. Well, was there anything else, sir? <sighs> okay. Fine. That's the way you want to play it? Just remember, nobody's coming out of this deal ahead of me. Are you staying for dinner, sir? Count on it. Very good, sir. Then I'll fix your place. Excuse me, sir. Well, Nick, your great uncle certainly did develop some remarkable theories. The physics alone should keep my colleagues at the university busy for a while. Could I ask you something, Professor? No. It's most unfortunate Randolph's intellect had to be directed toward uh, such a dead end. What a waste. Here's one entry in this journal of particular note. He writes, The scientific method may have similar limitations to the primitive conjuring practices I attempted with Zemea. Perhaps a combination of the two might yield better results. Could it be that where the ancients lacked a full understanding of the mechanics of the world, we modern scientists have ignored the more metaphysical aspects of a nature with which they are far more intimately involved? I wonder. Uh, well, I'll be back later. Ask Grimsby to bring me a coffee, would you? Uh, do you play, Mr. Lyman? <laughs> no, hello, Nick. No, no, no. I, I never enjoy those music lessons my mother attempted to force on me. Uh, Great Uncle Randolph tried to get me interested when I was a kid. Really? You spent a lot of time in this house as a youngster, didn't you? Oh, yeah. After my parents were killed, Randolph sort of took me under his wing. What about your grandfather? Oh, you know. His health problems and all. I don't think he was up to raising a kid. Hmm. Must have been a little rough on you. Uh, yeah. Maybe, at first. But Randolph really helped. He really opened up life for me. Taught me all sorts of new things. That's why I want to try to do something for him now, even if it is a little late. You're a fine young man, Nick. I'm sure Mr. Steer would have been very proud. That's why I think that people like you and I, people with Randolph's best interests at heart, should be the ones to handle this matter of the new will. I'm trying, Mr. Lyman. I know you are. I just want to reiterate that while you believe the professor to be a man of honor, it is still vital that any new will be placed in my charge before anyone else sees it. There are all kinds of legal complexities that can ensue from a situation like this. Believe me, Nick, 
it will be for the best. I'll remember that, Mr. Lyman. Hey, where did you come from? You belong to somebody, fellow, or are you just a neighbor? Well, you're a friendly guy anyway. Well, what are you doing in here, huh? You hungry, fella? Looking for food, were you? Right. What? Okay, you caught me. You, you can talk? Another five minutes and I'd have been out of here. Well, this is incredible. How could this have happened? It's the usual story. Pop ran off. Ma had a litter of kids. I was the oldest. So it's up to me to go out and steal food. Steal? You mean you're a... That's right. I'm a burglar. Now, if you'll excuse me... Wait! Come back here! Those who seek shall find... Uh, what? Uh, ah, ah, Madam Zorro, how are you this evening? Zmeya. Good, good. Glad to hear it. Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> interesting house, isn't it? More than you know. I know. You don't. I don't. May I see your hand? My hand? Which one? I want to see your right hand. Uh, yeah, I guess you can. Certainly. There you see. Nothing there. We shall see. Hmm. I see here that you are a strong man. A courageous man. A man with a strong heart and a strong mind. Really? So it says that, does it? Yes, and more. I see that you are a man to be trusted. Well, I, I'd like to think so. There is something else here. Another man. What? A man of letters. A mailman? No, a man of learning and wisdom. He spoke to you. Yes. A man of the law. Oh, uh, Mr. Lyman? I cannot say, but... You must heed his advice if you are going to triumph here tonight. Uh, I see. <laughs> really? You don't expect me to take this kind of thing seriously. It is all true. Can't you feel it? I do. I do, yes. Professor, can I stay down here with you? No. Nick, I'm beginning to get the impression from reading these journals that Randolph's unhealthy interest in death was taking its toll on his mind. He spent more and more hours each day thinking of nothing else. He completely abandoned all outside concerns, such as his family and his business. I wish now I had sought him out more myself during those last years. Anyway, let me read you this. He's writing about his efforts to combine primitive tribal rituals with scientific control methodology. Very clever, to be sure, but what a waste of a great man's life. He concludes the entry with this observation. I noticed a strange flux transition in the electric field while reading an incantation from an Etruscan prayer book. This could indicate that what I have suspected for some time now might just be true. Oh. <laughs> Sorry there, Nick boy. Sorry. Holy cow, Lenny. I couldn't resist. <laughs> boy, you should have seen my face. That was the scariest part. What are you doing down here? I thought you were with the others. Others? Now that's scary. Listening to Calvin or a good look of Prudence's mug, I tell you, that could drive a man to drink. Lenny, maybe you ought to have something to eat. Nah, food only soaks up good liquor. Come on, Nick, you're 21. Have a drink with me. I hate to drink alone. I do it, but I hate it. Oh, come on. I think dinner's almost ready. Okay, forget it. That's more for me. Lenny, I don't think you can hold your liquor. Poppy doodle. I can drink you or anybody under the floor. Under the table? No, under the floor. <laughs> Lenny!
My darling, it will be very soon now, dearest. I have made real progress in the last few weeks. I feel sure that I must be only a few steps from the door. There are signs everywhere. I hear the voices more often every day, and a few times I have found things move from room to room. Was it you, I wondered? Grimsby has been of some help, but because he does not realize the truth, he can only tell me so much. I still think that it is very strange. I am working as quickly as I can, not only because I want to be with you, but also because the people I told you of are getting desperate. If they can convince others of their lies, we will lose everything. I am making arrangements for Oliver to take over here after I am through. With his help, our efforts will not be lost to the world, either of them. Be patient a while longer, my love. I will not fail, I promise you. All my love, Randy. Are you coming to dinner, Professor? No, I can't leave this now. I found more about the energy disturbances I read to you about earlier. Listen, I have been able to repeat this extraordinary result several times now. That proves that it is not an anomaly in the equipment. I believe, though more tests are needed, that some ancient writings, carefully crafted and perfected over hundreds of years, when read aloud with absolute concentration, somehow focus the brain waves. This focus allows an alignment with thought emanations of the surviving non-corporeal intelligences. Really quite a remarkable hypothesis, eh, Nick? Of course, it's complete nonsense, but other than that... I don't think I'm as sure of that as you are, Professor. Don't talk rot, Nick. Go have your dinner, then take up the search again. We must have answers. This white wine is excellent, Grimsby. Hey, slow it down, will you? This dinner's gonna wipe out my entire stock. We're not absolutely sure it is your stock yet, lady. It doesn't really matter. He'll probably finish it off himself before the night is over. This night should have been over a long time ago. I still would like to know what we're doing here. Would you pass the bread, dear? I see no reason for it. This was all settled this afternoon, and, and that's that. And the butter, please, dear? Is there anything else, Kelly, my sweet? Oh, no, thank you, dear. Not right now. Then shut up! I'm trying to make a point here. Isn't Calvin's head good enough? <laughs> I already told you I'm staying. Clearly, there are differing points of view on this matter, and I suggest we try to discuss them reasonably and calmly. Listen, Lyman, there's plenty of food here. Why don't you get stuffed? I don't have to sit here. Why is everyone so on edge? Can't I even eat my dinner in peace? Mrs. Milverton is right. There's no reason we should fight among ourselves. We should try to work together. You'd know something about that, wouldn't you? All right, that's it. No, Nick, it's all right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Oh, Charles, do leave the children alone. They're not children anymore, Mother. I suggest that we give everyone here a chance to speak their minds. Well, that shouldn't take too long. Pass the please, Peas. Well, just count me out. I got mine. We should know where everyone stands, then perhaps we can devise an approach that will satisfy all of us. Oh, I don't think this fish agrees with me. Who does, Kelly? I think Mr. Lyman is right. See there, Lyman, I told you the idea was stupid. All right, let's just go around the table. Now, who would like to be first? No, the professor's not here. I'm sure we all know the professor's opinion. Why didn't he join us for dinner? He's still studying Randolph's journals. That'd be enough to spoil my appetite. He's the only one of us that's really doing anything that makes sense. All right, I'll go first. Fine, thank you, Miss Lamb. Well, as I said before, I'm convinced that Mr. Steer was murdered. I also know, as do some of you, that the dead are not at rest in this house. Now, that's a pretty broad statement, Miss Lamb. That's all right. She's a pretty broad. Milverton! I'm not a member of the family, and some of you probably think I don't even belong here. But I was very fond of Mr. Steer, and I want to see that the right thing is done by him. That's why I say we should stay and discover the truth. Nice going, Dulcie. I'll bet old Randy was fond of you, too. If, if you don't shut your mouth... Oh, cut it out, Charles. I think you should apologize for that remark. Just eat your please, Calvin. Kelly, keep out of it. I didn't mean to offend, miss. Oh, it comes to you naturally. Uh, who would like to speak next? You vultures can buzz around all you want, but nobody's gonna take what's mine. I've made myself clear. I have nothing more to say. If you're so anxious to get out of here, why don't you and Einstein there just go? Oh, sure. 
You'd like that, wouldn't you? You and Mommy? Maybe he's right, Snookums. I'm sure he'd like us out of the way. Him and his mother. Who knows what they might try to get away with. Uh, I'll... Uh, Mrs. Adler, you know I would never let anything like that happen. Mr. Lyman, are you insinuating that I or my son would... No, 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 of course not. I was simply trying to reassure... Well... That... The impertinence of some employees. I have to say, Mrs. Milton, that I resent that remark. Since your brother decided to abandon everything and run off on some wild ghost chase, I have been more responsible than anyone else for the smooth operation of your family's company. And handsomely paid for the privilege. Now look here. Don't <laughs> shout at my mother, Lima. Oh, you're a fine one to talk. Will you stop this? Oh, stick it back in the chair, sweetie. <gasps> Listen, you monkey! Oh, that's it! Let the women fight! Clear the table! <laughs> oh, stop it! Stop it, all of you! You're a disgrace to Randolph's memory! Randolph was a disgrace to Randolph's memory. Don't you talk about my brother, you... you interloper! Is there any more salad? Yes. Here! <laughs> now that's what I call a head of lettuce! Oh, come on, Dulcie. Let's get out of here before they bring the straight jackets. Pimento? Why did you do that? Grimsby, another bottle of wine. Grimsby, you go into my wine cellar once more and you're dead. Do you hear me, Grimsby? There is only one way. Grimsby, be so kind as to clear the table. Professor, Madame Zemay is going to conduct a seance. Wouldn't you like to attend? It could be interesting. No, Nick. You go. I think you're right. It should be most revealing, no matter what happens. As for me, I cannot leave these journals. I must find out what Randolph discovered, if anything. Even if he did drive himself insane with his obsession, the work recorded here could still be very important. Now go along. Be at that seance. That is much we still don't know about the living participants in this mystery. We shall begin the seance. Everyone will remain seated and silent. We all have the power, whether we realize it or not. That is why together we may achieve greater communion than I alone with the soul of this place. Should we all hold hands? No. Contact with the physical world will interfere with concentration. This is absolute nonsense. Such attitudes also interfere. Uh, we agreed to cooperate, Charles, even if some of us are a little dubious. You may have agreed to this burlesque, but I didn't. Mr. Milverton, if you truly reject the forces that rule the universe, then it would be better if you did not participate. <laughs> now that I agree with. Oh, Charles, it's just a game, darling. A dangerous game for those who do not believe. Well, you don't really expect anyone to accept such poppycock. Everyone who refuses to humble themselves before the infinity of truth must leave. Otherwise, we have no chance. Oh, come on, Aunt Prue. Even if it is a game, try to play along. Maybe you'll be surprised. No, oh, very well. But I never liked surprises. Anyone else? You'll have to excuse me, too. Callie, sit down. Please, dear. I just don't feel very good. I'll vouch for that. Oh, go on. You always were a party pooper. Good luck to the rest of you. Let us begin. Everyone, clear your mind. Now close your eyes and imagine a point of light far off in the distance. Watch the light. You are moving towards it. It grows larger and larger. You are coming closer and closer. You are moving into the light. Into the light. Closer, closer, faster, deeper. You are going through the light. The whole universe is light. You are part of the light. I call out into the night, into the heart of this place. Come forth as Lazarus came forth from his tomb. Come forth, speak, tell us your secret that we may know. Speak. Oh, I awake. 
We welcome you. I awake. Who calls me? We seek your truth. Who are you that speaks? You are here. You are my guests. My Randy, is it really you? Are you all right? Other than being dead, I'm sure he's fine. Tell us what we must know. I have nothing. We beseech you. Tell us. Randolph, fiddlesticks. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't upset him. Ask him about the will. Speak to us. Tell us your truth. There is no truth. All is as it should be. No! Randolph, what happened to you? Falling. 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 Someone was there. Who was it? Falling. Falling all alone. But I saw! Alone. Is there a will or isn't there? Is all now as you wished? As I would have it. All is well. I rest in peace. No! She's gone. No, there she is. Oh, my lord, the poor dear. Is she all right? Madam's mayor, are you all right? Madam? Wait, 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 I think she's coming round. Uh, yeah, yeah, she's breathing. Uh, oh, boy, is she breathing. Uh, I, I am awake. Yes, 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 take it easy now. Uh, Get her a sherry, Grimsley. Uh, Grimsley? Uh, I think she's okay. I am awake. Oh, wait a minute, something's wrong. Madam's mayor? No. No? Uh, maybe she hit her head. Uh, I don't think so. Who are you? What? Who the hell do you think? Randy? You're crazy. She's Randolph? Uh, was that you before? No. This is confusing. All right, then. Tell us the truth. There is a new will, isn't there? Yes. And you didn't just fall down the stairs, did you? No. There! Randolph! Where is the will? Safe. Where? Safe. Did he have a safe around here someplace? Uh, I don't know. Who murdered you, Mr. Steer? That's kind of personal, isn't it? Who? Here. Here. Now. You rang, sir. Who? Grimsby. Not now. Randolph. Who was it? <sighs> Randolph. Uh. Well, there she goes again. I'm sorry, Nick. She's unconscious. It doesn't matter. We heard enough. There is a new will, and Randolph was murdered. Oh, you're not going to fall for that old carny act, are you? It's true. No, I'm not sure this is the most reliable source of information, young fellow. Certainly wouldn't be admissible in court. We are not in court. And remember what Randolph said when Nick asked him who the murderer was? He, she, uh, didn't say anything. Yes, he did. He said, here. Here. Well, here, here. What's that supposed to mean? It means that the killer is here. He's one of us. Or she is. Game over? So, who won? You should have been there, Professor. What did you discover? I believe now that what Dalsy saw this afternoon was Randolph's murder. Murder? Uh, I'm also sure that the new will exists and that someone or something in this house is trying to keep us from it. This is what I found. Listen. My powers of concentration are growing every day as I practice reading more ancient and diabolical manuscripts of ritual verse. I am also beginning to understand how such seemingly simple peoples, without the benefit of modern technology, were able to develop mathematics, philosophy, architecture, and the like. Their mental abilities were their only sophisticated tools, and they honed them to a fine edge with disciplines such as I use now. It is strange and frustrating that as my technique improves, the energy fluctuations from outside increase. But that is all I can bring forth. No mind, no intelligence, and no communication of any kind is forthcoming. 
I can only assume that there is something in my environment that prevents this. You think this is a good idea, Dulcie? <gasps> oh, Nick. What? what? What do you mean? I mean, being by yourself in this house. Oh, the house doesn't really frighten me anymore, but... Well, you're right all the same. There is... Something to be afraid of here? Yes. Now that we know one of these people is a killer, the danger has become pretty real. But don't worry, Dulcie. I won't let anything happen to you. Nick. Oh, Nick. Oh, come on now, Dulcie. Everything's going to be okay. I've got to tell you something, Nick. Sure, anything. It's about Charles Milverton. What? I'm so ashamed. What? He made me do something, Nick. Something terrible. Dulcie! Well, I mean, that's not really fair. He didn't really make me. I agreed to it. Oh, why don't, why don't we just forget it? No, I can't. It's been on my mind constantly. I really don't want to hear this, Dulcie. Please, Nick. I have to tell you. Say, how about those fillies, huh? Do you know the worst part? A great meal tonight, wasn't it? Boy, that Grinsby sure can. I took money for it. Oh, my God. Dulcie! Well, my mother, we needed help desperately. I didn't want to, but... Oh, well, then why didn't you let your mother do it? Oh, Nick, how could she? She was in no position to do that. Well, Dulcie, you know that there's more than just what one... What bothers me the most is that it might have hurt Mr. Steer. Randolph? What did he have to do with it? Everything. I mean, what Charles wanted did belong to Randolph. Dulcie! I wasn't thinking clearly. And Charles said that he just wanted them for his mother, Prudence. He, he told me that she was worried about her brother and wanted to know what he was doing. Dul Dulcie, what are you talking about? What do you think? Mr. Steer's papers. The ones I was typing for him. What about him? Oh, haven't you been paying any attention? Charles paid me to give him copies of Mr. Steer's papers and not tell Mr. Steer about it. Oh, Dulcie. Oh, Nick, please forgive me. Forgive you? Dulcie, come here. Oh. oh. What did you make of all that, Grimsby? Sir? Do you have to always make it so difficult? I do my best, sir. What did you think of the seance? It seemed to occupy everyone, Master Nick. I've never taken to parlor games myself. Well, tell me this. Did that sound like Randolph talking? Mr. Steer? I couldn't say, sir. Is it possible? I really have no opinion, Master Nick. Grimsby, tell me about when you found Randolph. Actually, he found me, sir, working in the city. No, I mean after his fall. I see. There's nothing much to tell, sir. I found him lying at the bottom of the stairs. He seemed rather, well, dead. So I went to inform the authorities. Was there any sign of anyone else in the house? I saw no one, Master Nick. Did you hear him fall? No, sir. I was in the garden. So someone could have been in here with him when it happened. I can't say, Master Nick. Okay, Master Grimsby. Thanks. Lenny! Are you down here? Mother of Pearl! Hi, lad. Do you know we slicky the Angus McDougal we are a fleeing beastie? Huh? Give me a fine flighty cobbler and fuck as a sort of man can split a body's kilt. Uh... I'll no be barking for a wee wee you lasses and dawdles while spickers a stone in my shoe. Uh, well, I, uh... Well, in the haggis where your wee bunny doodle dang dangle and nail their gibbering day.
Right. And uh, how are we feeling, Madam's Mayor? Another. Take it easy. We don't want anybody smelling spirits on that spiritual breath of yours. I'll rinse. Just give me the brandy. I must say, Sybil, you put on one heck of a performance. Uh, right up until the end there. Getting conked on the head wasn't part of the deal. Nobody hit you. You must have tripped or something when the door opened. What door? What are you talking about? Well, I'm only speculating, of course, but there's no other reasonable explanation. That idiot Charles must have gone through the wrong door when he slipped out and let that draft in. I don't remember any of this. Everything was going great, and then, I don't know, you standing over me, and everyone was staring. Oh, that's true. Then you picked a fine time to start talking in your sleep. Well, you cut that out. What? I don't know what you're talking about. Did you hear me? Oh, stop prattling on and tell me exactly what happened. All right, don't get excited. You just blew the whole set up, that's all. Give me another drink. Look, you were doing your madam medium mumbo-jumbo when Charles came in on cue, and it was smooth sailing. Those fools were eating out of your hand. Suddenly, Charles goes out what must have been a door leading outside, and a blast of wind came whipping through the room. Blew out all the lights. By the time we got them going again, we saw you lying on the floor like a sack of ripe melons. That's sweet. Sorry. Anyway, I bring you around, I thought. And before you can say table tipping, you're, you're talking in a funny voice, telling that steer kid everything he wanted to hear. I told him? Those were your lips moving, baby. I'd recognize them anywhere. What did I say? This is nuts. Oh, nothing much. Just that there was a new will hidden somewhere safe, or maybe in a safe, and that somebody in this house murdered Randolph Steer. Would you like to hear more? Keep... Pouring. Curiouser and curiouser, as someone once said. Indeed. I've discovered why there's no electricity in the house anymore. Randolph wrote about it here. After giving the problem much thought, I have come to the conclusion that what separates me from the ancient powers is those things my world possesses that were unknown to past cultures. I will, therefore, remove them from my environment. All the electrical sources must go, the house current, telephones, radios, and all my test equipment. I will need to invent tools that require only the power of the mind. Perhaps then I have a chance. Mr. Lyman? Ah, oh, <laughs> Nick, <laughs> I, I, I didn't see you there. <laughs> well, uh, what, uh, uh, anything turn up yet, or uh, anything? <laughs> uh, no, nothing yet. I thought I'd take a look around up here. Ah, fine, good. Uh, got an appointment, Mr. Lyman? Appointment? No, no. <laughs> no, of course not. Appointment? No, no, no. I, I, I was just noticing how late it was getting. Hmm. Are you searching up here, too? Maybe we could search together. You know, Nick, that, that's an excellent suggestion. Yeah, yes, a fine idea. Yes, yes, but I'll, I'll tell you what. Wouldn't it be more productive to search separately together? At the same time, I mean. <laughs> Cover more ground that way. I suppose so, but... What's that? What? This... It sounds like... Yes, I didn't know... It's getting closer. It, it, it sounds like it's always in. Calvin and Prue. Blithering blizzards. Oh, Queen. Oh, boy. Whoa. Where did you come from? Moose Jaw, originally. Oh, I mean, how did you get here? I didn't want to come. Queen practically had to drag me the whole way. Well, what are you doing? Are you tracking some scoundrel through the frozen wastelands of the great North Country? Hardly. I'm the librarian. Can I help you? The librarian? 
But the, the uniform. Well, it is a municipal position. Steady, boy. Steady. Oh, uh, okay. Well, all right. Wait, wait a minute. What about the dog? Queen? Bookmobile. I don't believe this. Shh. Now I believe it. Can I help you? Sure. Ridiculous. Okay, I'm looking for the will. Author? Uh... Do you know the author? I, uh... Oh! Uh, Randolph Steer. Steer, Steer. I see nothing written by well, a Steer. Well, then, uh, I don't know... No matter. A Mountie always gets his manuscript. Down, Queen. Down, boy. Uh, fine. I'm sure it's here somewhere. We'll track that book down from the lowest windswept shelves to the highest snow-covered stacks. We'll leave no page unturned. If this steer has done anything, Queen will sniff it out. Listen, we'll rendezvous back here in a few minutes. And don't be overdue. You don't want to get on Queen's bad side, believe me. All right. Thanks, I will. Mush, Queen! Mush! What a snowflake. <coughs> but, he hello? I'll be out in just a moment. Oh, sorry. Uh, who's in there? Look, if you don't mind, why don't you just try another room? Uh, no, it, it's not that. It's, it's just, well, this is a closet, isn't it? Very funny. I think so. Look, I'll just be a second, okay? I'd appreciate it if you'd move away from the door. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. Okay, I'm away from the door. Thank you. Can I ask you a question? Uh, can it wait? Well... All right, what is it? Are you, I mean, are you dead? Oh, I wish. If you're not dead, who are you? Hello? Are you all right? What am I saying? Hello? Oh, no. What's wrong? Oh, no. Uh, hey, what's the matter? No! 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 So, what are we going to do, bright boy? We're going to keep our heads. The game has become more complicated, but not unwinnable. What if the college kid finds the new will? You know what's in it? Mm, not precisely. I do know that it does not correspond with our plans very well. As for Nick, there's little chance he'll find anything. I searched the whole house three days ago. Nothing. Now, I think we're safe there. And murder? I didn't sign on to get involved with any murder. Oh, relax. There wasn't any murder. That's rubbish. Steer was simply nice enough to throw himself down the stairs so that our dreams could come true a bit sooner than expected. Mm, that was nice of him. Don't be ridiculous. I didn't say a word. And you won't. Look, Will, honey, I get real unfriendly when I feel threatened. Come on, who's threatening, Sybil? We've got a great deal going here. Neither of us are going to do anything to spoil it, are we? Right. So what about the Ernst Schabernack Foundation? Is that still the best way to play this hand? Mm, you've got no choice there, I'm afraid. Will's been read. You're going to have to stick with it now. That steer's a pushy guy. What if he raises a stink and starts a big murder investigation? I can control him. Anyway, as soon as he gets tired of the treasure hunt, he'll go back to chasing college girls and drinking beer and forget all about this business. You're too sure of yourself, Willis. I think I can read men better than you can. I don't think he's going to give up all that easily. We'll take care of it. Don't worry. I'd like to be sure. There's nothing to be done now. We'll just have to wait and see. That's what Custer said, isn't it? Trust me. And that's what Crazy Horse now said. Now listen, Sybil. Nothing must happen to Nick. That really would blow up in our faces. No, I know that. You're right. No, I was thinking of our weak link. What's that? The only other person who knows that you're not really a knight in shining armor. What? You mean Charles? Uh, professor, I don't know how much longer I can keep this up. The others are grumbling and strange things keep happening. Nick, I'm not sure what I believe anymore. Either Randolph was completely insane or... Listen to this. 
success at last. Many hours of intense concentration and experimenting with various combinations of verses and chants have finally produced a definite result. A voice, soft, indistinct, as though coming from a distance and yet there in the room with me. I couldn't make out the words, only that they were words. Who could it be? Who could it be? Lenny? Nick, boy, fancy meeting you here. Small house, isn't it? <laughs> I'm surprised to see you so far from your treasure room. Treasure room? Oh, yeah. Yes, you're right. Absolutely right. I'm telling you, Nick, you've got to wash your back in this place. They steal the coins off a dead man's eyes. Who are you talking about? All of them. All of them steers. Money, money, money. That's all any of them care about. You watch yourself, Nick boy. Don't let them turn you into one. End up like that swine Charles if you're not careful. You listen to Lenny. Uh, maybe we should go downstairs and get Grimsby to, to make us a coffee. What do you say? Coffee? Yeah. Never touch the stuff. Ruins the stomach. It's good to know that you watch your health, Lenny. Uh, so why did you come up here? Huh? Ah, why indeed. Uh, you'd like me to tell you that, wouldn't you? If you want to, Lenny. Business. Yeah, I've got some business to attend to. Business? Here? But don't tell anybody. Just between you and me. Wait a minute. Never you mind, Nick old chum. Never you mind. What's the mystery, Lenny? <laughs> no, 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 no. You said too much already. Just remember what I told you. Watch you don't turn into another Randall. I thought you said it was Charles. Him too. They're all the same. All of them. You just be careful. I gotta go. I gotta go. You sure you're all right? Great, Nick boy. Never felt better in my life, but not as good as I'm gonna feel. I just noticed something strange, Nick. In this house? You've got to be kidding. No. Look at the painting. Very nice. So? Well, knowing how Randolph felt about his wife Irene, don't you think it's odd that there's no portrait of her? Yeah, I guess so, now that you mention it. Maybe he thought that she was so special that she shouldn't be hung with the others. I mean, her picture shouldn't be hung. Well, then where is it? I don't know, Dulcie. I don't even know if there was a picture. Anyway, we've got enough mysteries to worry about. Don't go adding another one. It is strange, though. Hey, Dulcie, safes are sometimes hidden behind paintings. Maybe there's one in here somewhere. Well, I hope it's behind one of the lower ones, otherwise we're going to need a ladder. Why would anyone put a safe in a spot where they'd need a ladder every time they wanted to get to it? So that the noise of a burglar putting the ladder up would wake them? Are you a Burns and Allen fan, Dulcie? Who? Come on, we'll start with the easy ones. Oh, gosh. Well, he's kind of good looking, isn't he? And you are as lovely as the spring moon over Baghdad. Oh, my. Watch out, Dulcie. Have you brought the amulet? What? The amulet. Stolen from around the neck of the vizier as he lay sleeping. No. Dulcie, didn't your mother ever teach you not to talk to strange men? Uh, very strange men? Oh, but the battle horns of Byzantium am I to be forever imprisoned in this place? Who are you? I am Balshar, chief temple guard of Akarashi. I was cursed by the caliph sorcerer for stealing from the temple treasure. But it was the caliph himself who stole the jewels. You mean you were framed? And this amulet you mentioned could break the curse and free you from this painting. It is the only way. Uh, Balshar, I hate to tell you this, but all that kind of stuff has been gone for hundreds of years. This is Istanbul. No, really. Oh, uh, Mr. Balshar. Yes? You wouldn't know if there's a safe behind you by any chance? I do not know. I cannot turn around. Oh, right. Sorry. There is a passage there in the corner. Really? Thanks, Balshar. If you should run across any amulets, remember my fate hangs in the balance. And I hang in the gallery. Enough. Someone might come in. Sure. Now you want to tell me what's going on? I'd love to, darling, but... 
Unfortunately, I don't know myself anymore. Listen, sweetheart, don't mistake me for that milksop mouthpiece, Lyman. You'd better play it straight with me. My, my, aren't we ferocious? I don't know if I like you better when you roar like a lion or purr like a kitten. It's not the size that counts, baby. So tell me what happened to the sound. I told you, I don't know. The last thing I remember is you saying something like, rest in peace, and then everything went black. Yeah, somebody opened a window or a door and all the lights blew out. You, you mean that wasn't you? Me? I never moved. Well, well the next thing I know, I, I'm lying on the floor and everybody's staring at me. For a minute, I thought I was back at the Boom Boom Room in Jersey. Well, what about the funny voice and uh, changing the whole story around on me? I was out, I tell you. Oh, I... I don't know what I was saying. What are you saying? I don't know. Everybody in there thought it was Steer talking. Oh, that's bull. Wait just a second. Maybe Lyman rigged the whole thing somehow. Unless maybe it really was Randall. That's nuts. Don't let this clairvoyant crap go to your head, sugar. Just remember, tough guy, that clairvoyant crap is our bread and butter. Pro. It's unbelievable, Nick. Absolutely unbelievable. Is it possible that any of this could be true? In the fourth, Randolph writes of how the voices came again, becoming clearer and closer each time. He tells of having conversations with them. Here he writes, It is often difficult to carry on a true dialogue. I think that some of them don't fully realize their situation. They often seem to think they are still alive and functioning normally in their original environment. There are exceptions to this. Each one has certain unique qualities. And further into the journal, I found this entry. It happened, finally. By the combined force of my will and theirs, working in unison, it came to pass. Materialization. I have at last seen a real, live ghost. I think I know how he felt, Professor. You should be in here. Oh. Look, if you want information... Good morning, Ash, Duster, and Clay. Can I help you? Oh, Mr. Chamberlain. Okay, I'll see if I can connect you. You're not really here, are you? May I help you, mister? Uh, I don't know. I was looking for... Good morning. Doyle, Mail, Mackerel, and Cop. Oh, who did you wish to speak to? Oh, Mr. Stewart, I'm sorry. <clears throat> He's no longer with us. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm looking for a will. I'm sorry, mister. This board is for incoming calls only. Good morning. Coffin, casket, and shroud. Can I help you? Mr. Helper, whom shall I say is calling? Miss Sexton. Could I... Miss, Miss Sexton, that line is dead, but I think the number's still in service. Please try again. Thank you. Hey, hey, hold the phone. You're calling up the dead, aren't you? You know, honey, you're kind of cute. You want my number? <laughs> well, thanks anyway, but... What's the matter, Toots? Ain't I your type? Well, I'm kind of fussy. I'll take anything with a pulse. Good morning, Crowbay, Carrion, and Corpse. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Houseman has already departed. <laughs> Can anyone else help you? Mr. Port, one moment, please. Is there anything you can tell me? Look, doll, no loitering in the exchange. Parish pass and plant. Good morning. Oh, Mr. Page. No, I'm sorry. He's, uh, late. Some people don't know when their number's up. Hey, what are you doing? Pipe down, Louie. You want the screws to hear you? Louie? Screws? Get over here and bring the sock. The sock? Hold it. I ain't holding for nothing and nobody. I'm out of here tonight. Now give me the sock. I don't see any sock. It's right there on the bunk, you blind. Sorry, no sock. Those dirty, no-good screws. They must have found it. Never mind. We don't have to worry about the dirt no more. Let them eat it. We'll be long gone. Are, are you sure you know what you're doing? Every miserable con, lifer, and dirtbag in the world, and I gotta draw me a new fish still green behind the gills. Do you want out of here or not? Uh, uh I don't know. Forget it. 
Go ahead, hang around and go stir crazy. I'm scramming out of this pigsty widget without you. Hey, hold it. I think. Yeah. 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 I see the light. I can see the light. Babes, fools, Broadway, look out. Shotgun Charlie is on his way. Watch your back, kid. Well, they'll never take me alive. Calm down, Olive. Take it easy. Oh, it's a madhouse. A loony It's team. all over now. You're fine. Relax. It certainly is over. Over and done with. I am getting out of this asylum before I belong in one. I agree with you. We have to get out of here. The only problem is getting everyone else out, too. Oh, who cares, Willis? Let's just go. We've got what we wanted. Why are we stuck in this nut house? That damn professor and his lackey, Nick. We must find a way to get rid of them. What are you saying? No, 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 no. I don't mean that. I mean, get them to give up this ridiculous search and get away from here. Oh, let them. They won't find anything. We can't take that risk, no matter how remote the possibility. Two days. That's all I need. Then I can raise this monstrosity to the ground, and that will be the end of it. Willis, what's going on in this house? Those strange people, and out there in the hallway. I don't understand. It's just nerves, that's all. We've both been under a great strain. Nerves? What are you talking about? These things are real. I am not the only one to see them. What do you want me to think? Are they ghosts? This being Randolph's house, I wouldn't rule out anything. You know, he was always poking around in strange places, digging up tombs and engaging in unnatural practices. Rubbish. He was simply a silly old fool pining away for his dead wife and grasping at whatever straws might ease his pain. Well, he's out of it now and better off all in all. What about the seance? What about that? Now that is another matter. I was sure Sybil was playing it straight. No, I don't know. We may have another little problem there. I haven't liked her right from the beginning. I don't see why we needed her at all. Uh, we've been through all this. What, we going to talk Steer into believing in the supernatural? Of course not. She did that part beautifully. Speaking of beautiful parts, you're not distracted from the original plan being around that fussy. Olive, darling, how can you even think such things? You and I have waited and planned for this for almost seven years. Nothing is going to keep us apart now. Oh, Willis. Ollie. Oh, of course, if you ever lie to me, I'll string you up by the... Ah, darling. Darling. Calvin! Olive. There you are. It's it's about time. Olive. Come along. Callie, we're leaving. Olive. Will you stop saying Olive? Now let's go. Just what in the Sam Hill is going on we'll here? We'll discuss it at home. We'll discuss it right here, right now. I'm going to get my coat. Go downstairs and get the car right this instant. You stay right where you are, Olive. <gasps> don't you raise your voice to me. I want an explanation now. I don't care what you want. Who do you think you are? I'm your husband. Woo! That's who I am. Aunt Olive? Calvin? Kelly! How could you? Now, I want to know what you were doing in that room with that man Lyman, and I want to know now. Uh, nothing. Kelly, nothing at all. The truth! I swear, I was just resting. Well, uh, Mr. Lyman came in not knowing I was there. Well, well... Mr. Lyman had better have a better story than that. Oh, forgive me, I... Of all the hypocritical self-righteous... Now, now, just hold on there, Olive. You're jumping to a ridiculous conclusion. You and that tea leaf ridding Tootsie. Oh, that is absurd. Why, I've never even looked at them. Uh, her. You cat. Nick! Yes, Aunt Olive? You want to know who killed Randolph? Huh? What? Well, there's your man. What? What? What are you talking about, Aunt Olive? 
Calvin? That's right. That's absolutely preposterous. Calvin was furious all morning the day Randolph died. Then later, he was looking for something in the attic and found his mother's wedding picture. He came storming downstairs, cursing Randolph something terrible. You know, he's always hated him. He was jealous of his own mother. He threw the picture against the wall, shattering into a thousand pieces. It took me an hour to clean up the mess. Anyway, then he storms out of the house, muttering something about fixing the so-and-so, and he drives off. He didn't get back for three hours. Will you be quiet this year? And then I received word later that day that Randolph was dead. I think I knew then, but I wouldn't let myself believe it. A load of rubbish. You're just trying to change the subject. What about you and Lyme? Yes, it's true. Willis and I are in love. We plan to be married. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well, I guess we're gonna need a bigger house then. I wouldn't worry about that. You'll be moving into a big house, all right. Nick? You know this is complete nonsense. Nick? Nick? It's getting late, Professor, and I still don't see myself getting any closer to finding that will. Perhaps there is available help that you haven't taken advantage of, Nick. Like what? Listen to your great-uncle Randolph. The materializations are fairly regular now. I cannot tell if it is I or them that is improving the medium of communication between us. More interesting is that there is some evidence of their ability to manipulate physical objects in this world. At other times, this proves to be an illusion. My most notable observation is that if I listen carefully enough to their words or look carefully enough at their actions, I get the impression that they are trying to communicate something of value to me. Maybe that was just an illusion, too. Try not to overlook anything, Nick, and do let me know how things are progressing. Well, Dulcie, I, I don't know what else to do. Oh, it is discouraging. Would either of you like something? The will would be nice. Or at least the truth of what happened to Great Uncle Randolph. Perhaps some lemonade? No, thank you, Grimsby. No, Grimsby. Defeat is bitter enough for me. Oh, Nick, don't give up hope. There's still time. I'm sorry to hear you're not in the best spirits, Master Nick. Please, Grimsby, don't try to be funny. Funny, sir? Maybe... maybe he never actually had the chance to write the will. Maybe he just intended to do it, but he died before he could. But the seance! He said there was a will. Well, it, I mean, it was rather confusing. I mean, how can we be Gr sure... Grimsby, you heard what Madame Zemea said. You heard the voice. Was it Randolph or not? Perhaps the lady had a cold, sir. I don't know. Maybe my vision was just an hallucination. You don't believe that. But why should I see it? Why should he show me the truth? If it was true, I'm not even a member of the family. I hardly knew him, really. Miss, if I may say, Mr. Steer was very fond of you, as he was of Master Nick. If he did have something to say, I'm sure he would have chosen one of you to say it to. Thank you, Grimsby. But I... I betrayed him. Oh, come on, Dulcie. You were tricked, and your mother needed help. Oh, that's no excuse. If you'll pardon me, perhaps you should let Mr. Steer decide if you are worthy of his friendship. You're a real friend, Grimsby, thanks. Not at all, Master Nick. Bum, I'm telling you, I had him cold. We was just dancing for the last three rounds. The first round, boy, that was beautiful. <laughs> There's the bell, and I steps into the ring. Oh, that's a thing where the fight happens, see? So I steps into the ring, and pow, I smash his face in, see? He don't even know the fight started. <laughs> so anyways, he gets to his feet somehow. Uh, that rap manager must have given him some of that horse stuff. So anyway, he gets up and pow, I let you have another one. I mean, he hits the man like a sack of potatoes from a third-story window. <laughs> then the 
bell rings, see? So anyways, I'm ready, see? I'm gonna take him out in the next round. But something happens, see? It's like I've been hit by a train that has run over my head or something, you know, vital kind of. You know what I think? I think that rap manager mind slips me a Mickey, you know? Cause he's rigged it, right? But I go at him anyway, see? I'm a swinging and a jabbing and I give him a right, a left, and another left, and a right. But all the time, he's hitting me, see? And I'm bleeding and the ropes are flying around in my head and I can't see no more, see? So I try and open my eyes, see? And what I see is his glove coming to my nose like a cannonball. I don't even remember hitting the mat. Wow. What happened? I died, you dope. What do you think? Dead end. Getting somewhere. Ah, Nick, I'm glad you're here. I found something disturbing. Listen, I am beginning to feel pressures from the outside. I believe that there are forces at work who would happily see my research destroyed and myself dispensed with for their own ends. If I am ever to reach Irene, I can let nothing stand in my way. There is another complication now. If I am interpreting some of the messages from the other side correctly, I may not be alive much longer. Under the circumstances, I'm not quite sure what that means. I must take steps to protect this doorway that I have opened. Go on, Nick. Continue your investigation. This may be our last chance. I wonder what that guy is guarding there. Hmm, seems pretty solid. Maybe there's something inside. Oh, what's this? It. it must be here! Mrs. Steer, can't you help me? Great. All these ghosts running around and you have to be just a painting. Thanks, Irene. See you later. Much later, I hope. What are you doing here? What are any of us doing here? This isn't the time to discuss philosophy. I don't know about that. As a matter of fact, I was just thinking about self-preservation versus... versus... What? Self-preservation versus virtue. I don't want to alarm you, but you know you're drunk out of your mind. Yeah, I'm drunk. Drunk on the fruits of my victory. But I'm not out of my mind. No, you could have fooled me. You don't fool me either, Mr. Willis Lyman. Fancy lawyer kind of fella. Not for one minute. Good. Now stand aside, please. Oh, certainly. Absolutely. Pardon me. I saw you. <laughs> what did you say? I was there. Here. There, then. You're babbling, then. I'm making surfic pens, and you know it. I saw you and Randolph. 
What is this? Like I said, self-preservation. I was here at the house when you came to visit Randolph that last, very last time. Yes. Oh boy, you were mad that day. Couldn't really blame you though. Very well, Lenny. You saw me. I came to visit my client. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Nothing at all except that your client turned up dead right after your little visit. Why, you miserable lush. Are you trying to say that I would... Would you like me to stand over by the stairs? What does that mean? Then you won't have to hit me so hard. Let gravity do your dirty work for you. You really are out of your mind. How crazy will it sound in court, Lyman? You come to the house, you're hopping mad about something, Randolph is found dead just moments after you leave, and lo and behold, two weeks later, little Willis Lyman, little attorney at law, ends up controlling the whole kit and caboodle of the old man's estate. I get nothing from the estate. Steer left it all to that ridiculous foundation. I'm merely the administrator. Merely the administrator. Come on, you can administer that fortune any way you like. For all I know, this foundation thing is probably a lot of hooey, too. Aren't you forgetting something? I could be, if you make it worth my while. I mean, if you really did see me, then you were here, too, when Randolph was... <laughs> when he died. So what? I didn't profit by his death. What? Somebody going to think I'd commit murder for a few bottles of booze? Please. Considering it's your life's blood. Why argue, counselor? I'm not a greedy man. Certainly not in your league anyway. All I need is what Randolph provided. A living. Like a pension. That's reasonable, surely. Given the fact that I had nothing to do with Randolph's accident, what reason do I have to offer you anything? Why are you even talking to me now? Listen, Lenny. You are a member of the Steer family. As Mr. Steer's executor and friend, I feel it is my responsibility to see that you're looked after naturally. I'm sure we can come to some satisfactory arrangement. <sighs> Sure we can. Well, that's it, Professor. They're preparing to leave. Mr. Lyman will file the current will in court tomorrow. Nick, I'm afraid I was wrong. The ultimate answer is not contained in these journals. Let me read you this last entry. Tonight I will attempt the final breakthrough. I think I have established my intention strongly enough so that all the forces on the other side will be in accord. I do not know what will happen. One way or the other, I will bring Irene to me or go where she has gone. I have completed the preparations to ensure that my work will continue. The good professor will know what to do once he faces the truth that fills this house. He wrote that two days before he died. He must have had some kind of success that night, judging by his note to me. He actually made it through the door and lived to write about it. I wonder what he found. Irene, perhaps? I hope so, Nick. I hope so. Well, I suppose we'd better go meet with the others before they leave. Well, Nick, thank you for a very interesting evening. I think we've all had some fun with this whole matter, but it's really time we were going. It, it can't end like this. It's not the way Randolph wanted it. Well, Nick, I'm afraid if you can't produce a new will here and now, then that will have to be the end of it. Can you do that, Nick? Do you know where the new will is? Grimsby, may I have the will, please? The will, Master Nick? Yes, Grimsby. I know that you took the will after Randolph died to keep it safe. But it's time to hand it over and save both the house and Randolph's legacy. Could I ask a question, Master Nick? Yes? Do you know what happened to Mr. Steer? Yes, Grimsby. He was murdered. By whom, sir? You're out of your mind. I don't think so, Lenny. I made some remarks.
talk about his, about his ghost. And I said something he didn't like about Irene. I, I don't even remember what it was. I was drunk, I tell you. He, he got hopping mad and he told me to get out. He told me never to show my face to her again. He was gonna cut me off without a penny. Me, Lenny. So I, I hit him with my bottle. I, I didn't mean to kill him, but he was so close to the stairs. I went down and found he was... Well, I, I poured some liquor down his throat so it would look like he got drunk and fell. Nick. Grimsby, a ghost! All this time, and none of us knew. The other ghosts knew. They've been trying to tell me all along in their own way. How does it feel to be a rich man, Nick? Do you plan to follow in Randolph's footsteps? In one way, Professor. I'm going to marry the girl I love. I think Dulcie and I will be very happy living here in Steer Manor. <laughs> we'll never lack for company, anyway. Nick, why did you bring us into the trophy room? I'll show you.